So earlier this year I looked at Heroin Complex, and now it's time for us to peek at its sequel Heroin Worship. I kind of want to get this done before the third book, Heroin's Journey, was out. And while well, I'm talking about the book now, and Heroin's Journey is already out, it is currently at the bottom of my to-read list. Or to-read pile, as it were. There are a lot of books I want to read, so I have to read. But never mind all that, we're here to talk about the sequel before that sequel. I can, and I honestly did consider Heroin's Complex a really enjoyable read. So, let's see if the sequel is as good as the original, or if it managed to not reach the same success as its first one did. The fate of most sequels, honestly. So, some time has passed since the ending of the last book. Eve and her friends have gotten into the swing of living a simple life, filled with long-running breakfast marathons and waiting for a next demon attack that never seems to come. Avada Jupiter is utterly bored with this life, tired of the boring life, and wishing she can get back in the action of being a superheroine. As her inner self, her real name Annie Chung, as she refers to it, starts rising more and more to the surface, considering her own misgivings and whatnot, especially from the last book. However, after an odd encounter at a local boutique known as Pussy Queen, I love that name, they run into, well, antagonist minions from the last book, which doesn't sound very threatening, but honestly, in context, it's pretty threatening. Anyway, E's boyfriend proposes to her after the attack, and this sends the entire city of San Francisco into bridal marriage fever. As Avada is made E's maid of honor, the group also discovers mysterious demons causing chaos amongst the upcoming brides of San Francisco, causing them all to run a little mad and go a little insane. Now her hands fuller than they've ever been in some time, Avada jumps at the chance to actually do something for once instead of just sitting around waiting. However, can she keep herself from returning to her previous ways of being an uber bitch while also dealing with her internal personal struggle and her own minor personal drama in the midst of an identity crisis? She has a lot on her plate now that I think about it. Yeah, as you could tell hopefully from that summary of events, the story has actually switched focuses from Eve to Avada, or more Annie, which is her real name. And that's honestly all the better for it. Eve's character arc was managing to stick up for herself to Annie and learn to let herself go a little while and relax a bit, which was all covered in the last book. While Avada has to learn to be more true to her inner self and relearn what it means to be a good friend and how to stop being so overbearing, which is basically her journey in this book. So yeah, I'm not going to lie and say the story isn't a lot like the last one. I mean, they almost had the same structure. There's odd demonic activity going around and the group's investigating it. While our main heroine is focused on, or is forced into an uncomfortable role, struggling with who she really is, as well as a lot of romantic slash sexual tension with the dude that's close to her. And while these points are quite similar, the details in which they're presented, it's really where it matters, and they're vastly different. While in the last book, the demonic scheme was a large take over the world style joint, this one's a smaller scale and a lot more personal to Avada, especially considering Eve's bridal status. And the framework for relationship is built upon some stuff brought up in the last book about the group's respective past in high school and whatnot. And similar to the last book, I think the overall failing of the narrative comes with the villain, whose scheme is honestly the weakest part of the book, similar to the last book, and honestly they actually kind of made fun of that in the last book, so I think that might be the actual point. But the characters and relationships are still the best things in the narrative. Lovata struggles with who she really is and her what she refers to as her inner Ani Chung, her stuff with her parents, all that kind of stuff, as well as her stuff with Eve and her trying to become a best friend again. It's all the best part of the book, and that's mostly what the book is, so yeah. I really love the character writing here. And it's, again, the best part of this narrative, and I enjoy it. It's also good, especially considering she's dealing with a great loss of per popularity from the last book, as well as Eve being a new hotness. So there's a lot of struggle for Avada to keep up her I'm trying to be a good friend act, or on that act, trying to still be up a good friend, while also trying not to slide back into her old ways from the last book of being told diva. And at least a lot of interesting scenarios, especially considering how the public perceives her at this point, especially her relationship with Eve, which 
yeah, a lot of this seems like backlash against her character from the last book, which is honestly justified considering it. As for the other characters, Eve, while not the main character this time around, is still the enjoyable persona she was in the last book, with a lot more energy and a lot more free than how she was at the beginning of the last book because she's learned to accept herself and all that stuff. But she's also going through the whole bridal stages and that leads to a lot of character drama that she's dealing with throughout the book on top of her own relationship with Annie or Avada. Lucy's still an enjoyable minor character who's as crass and enjoyable as she was in the last book and I love how laid back she is about practically everything that's going on around her. She's still one of the best side characters in this entire franchise. <laughs> And now we have Scott, who had a minor supporting role in the last book, and has now moved up to being basically secondary lead alongside Avada. And you can tell what that means from that line, if you remember what I said about character drama and relationship drama. As I stated earlier, their antagonist, while having a better, albeit smaller, plan than the last story, is still the weakest part of the book, even though his plan somewhat fits into Avada's own personal struggle throughout the course of the story, making it making the villain more thematically appropriate and more on point with the actual character journey, but still not particularly strong or all that memorable or all that important except for kicking the plot in motion. Still better than the last villain who plot whose plan was apparently was very, very so bad that the characters themselves mocked the villain for it. And it was hilarious. And they really couldn't do that this time around because the villain's plan was actually pretty competent, if not still stupid. Overall, I say that, like the last book, this is pretty enjoyable and it is as good as the original, if not exactly on par with it. I have to say, if you haven't read Harrow Complex yet, then you won't get a lot of it out of a lot of stuff out of this one, but if you have read Heroin Complex, you should really read Heroin Worship. Of course, that's nature of sequels, really. And if you're somewhat getting into the uh, getting into the series as a whole, then I recommend just reading both of the books anyway, if you're curious about any of this. Just start with Heroin's Complex and move on to Heroin's Journey. I mean, Heroin's Worship. Now, let's hope that Heroin's Journey completes the hat trick trifecta, and maybe we'll be able to get to it sometime this year. Although considering my read list keeps getting bigger, I doubt it. Till next time everybody!